Okay, so in this video, we will find the following integral. As we are trying to integrate a rational function, we must use the method of partial fractions. The first step is a long division as 2 equals 2. So we first perform long division. So we divide x squared minus 1 by x squared plus 6x plus 13. What times x squared is x squared? Obviously, simply 1. Multiplied through by 1. We subtract. x squared minus itself is 0. There is no multiple of x, so negative 6x, negative 6x. Negative 1, negative 13 is negative 14. And now we have a degree 1 polynomial. This is a degree 2 polynomial. As 1 is strictly less than 2, this completes our long division. 1 is the quotient, and negative 6x, negative 14 is the remainder. And so now this rational function is equal to its quotient, 1, plus the remainder, negative 6x, negative 14, over the divisor, x squared plus 6x plus 13. We can simplify a little bit, right? There's a common factor here of negative 2. So let's factor it out, which will give us 1 negative 2 times. Well, you'll be left with 3x plus 7. over x squared plus 6x plus 13. So as always, instead of integrating the rational function directly, we will integrate the result from long division, as both functions are equal. And now, this will be trivial. The negative 2 is a constant multiple, so all we have to do really is integrate this rational function. Well, we have now a single rational function, the question is, can we decompose this rational function into a sum of partial fractions? Well, only if we can factor our denominator. And it may not be clear whether or not you can factor this by inspection. If you're not sure, don't waste your time. As always, find your discriminant. Let's see what comes out of this. b is 6, so b squared is 36 minus 4 times a, which is 1, so minus 4 times 1, times c, which is 13. 4 times 13 is 52, so we have 36, minus 52, which is, of course, negative. Because our discriminant is negative, this polynomial is an irreducible quadratic polynomial over the real numbers. So we cannot factor this quadratic over the real numbers, and so we cannot decompose this rational function into a sum of two partial fractions. Well, the question is then, well, how will we integrate this rational function? Every time you have an irreducible quadratic on your denominator, you will have to complete the squares. So now let us integrate this rational function by using the completion of the squares idea. So we will integrate. 3x plus 7 over x squared plus 6x plus 13, which will be equal to, well, let us complete the squares right here. We want to square something that will return the quadratic term and the linear term exactly. This is, of course, simply x plus 3. If you square this, you will get x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 6x plus 3 times 3, 9. But we need to have a constant term of 13. So 9 plus what is 13? Of course, this is plus 4. OK. So that is our completion of the squares. And now the next question is, well, what was the point of completing the squares? The idea now is we want to make a u-substitution. If you ignore first the numerator, 
and you look at what you have left over, you have essentially 1 over something squared plus 4. This is almost 1 over something squared plus 1, which would be the derivative of arctangent of x. So the idea is we want to make a proper substitution so that this becomes a single variable squared, and we can transform the 4 into a 1. So we want to replace x plus 3 by something squared, so say u squared, but if we only make this substitution, then this will be u squared plus 4. We would like it to be u squared plus 1, so the idea is, well, what squared will give you a factor of 4? The answer is, of course, 2. So if we let x plus 3 be 2u, then once we square x plus 3, we will get 4u squared, and we can factor the 4. Now, we need a differential, so both sides are equal, so they have the same differential, so the differential of x plus 3 will equal the differential of 2u. The derivative of x plus 3 is 1, so the differential of x plus 3 is simply dx, which will equal, well, the derivative of 2u is 2, times, of course, du. So dx is 2 du, and all we're missing is the x here. So what is x in terms of u? Well, quite simply subtract 3 on both sides, and so x will be 2u minus 3. And now we can perform our u substitution. So first thing, 3 times x. As we have just said, x is 2u minus 3. plus 7 over x plus 3 squared, but x plus 3 is 2u, so if you square this you get 4u squared, plus of course 4, and don't forget the x is not du, but the x is 2 times du. So let's see what we have now. Let's simplify first our numerator and denominator. So first thing we have 2, we can pull 2 out of the integral as it is a constant multiple. We can factor here a 4 and also pull that 1 out, so 2 over 4. Integral of, what are we left with? Well 3 times 2u will give you 6u, minus 9 plus 7 minus 2 over, don't forget we factor the 4 here, and this leaves us with u squared plus 1. And the u as we already factored the 2 outside. Well, we can simplify even some more now. So we have 2 quarters, that's just 1 half. And we can also factor a 2 from here, so times 2, which will leave us with 3u minus 1 over u squared plus 1. The u, so this cancels, and we're left with the integral of 3u minus 1 over u squared plus 1, after first completing the squares and making the proper u substitution. Now, if you try to integrate this rational function as one rational function, it cannot be done. What you have to do is split up this rational function into the integral of 3u over u squared plus 1 minus the integral of 1 over u squared plus 1. And you will see how different the integrals are, which will hopefully make it clear that we have to split up this rational function into two separate integrals. I will factor the 3 outside as a scalar multiple, so 3 times the integral of u over u squared plus 1, du, and then minus the integral of 1 over u squared plus 1, and now if you look, well, the 3 stays there, and the integral of u over u squared plus 1 
if you recall this is one of our special integrals, is simply one half the ln of u squared plus one. Of course, if you don't remember this, you simply have to make a substitution. You could let say z be u squared plus one, and as the derivative of this is two u, which is up to two u, this is a simple substitution. Minus, this one is even more straightforward, as one over u squared plus one is the derivative of our tangent of u. plus, of course, a constant of integration. And you can appreciate why you had to split up this rational function into two rational functions, as in the one hand, you have to use the logarithmic function, on the other, the arctangent function. So if you keep this fraction as one and try to integrate this directly, you cannot do it. Only by splitting it up, do you get two fairly different, but also fairly straightforward integrals. Okay. Well, now we have the integral of our rational function, but in terms of u, we want to go back in terms of x. So let's substitute. So we have to replace u in terms of x. So if you look here, if x plus 3 is 2u, if you divide across by 2, you will have that u is, of course, x plus 3 divided by 2. So let's substitute. So we have here 3 half, the ln of u squared. So if you square this, you'll get this squared over 4. So it will give you, if you square it out, x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 6x plus 9 over 4 plus 1, which I will rewrite as plus 4 over 4, and you'll see why in a second, minus the arctangent of u, which is x plus 3 over 2. Now, why did I do this? Why did I rewrite 1 over as 4 over 4? Well, I can now combine as a single fraction. This will be 3 over 2, the ln of, well, x squared plus 6x plus 9 plus 4 is plus 13. All over 4. Minus the arctangent of x plus 3 over 2 plus c. And now I can simplify this quite nicely if I recall a simple property of the ln function. Namely, well, we have here the ln of a quotient. And if you have the ln of a divided by b, this is the ln of a minus the ln of b. So let me use this property here, and you will see why in the second step. So we'll have what? 3 half, of course, multiplies everything. So it will multiply both logarithmic functions. So 3 half the ln of our numerator minus 3 half times the ln of the denominator, which is 4, minus arctangent of x plus 3 over 2, plus, of course, t. So why did I do this? Why did I first rewrite 1 as 4 over 4? and then split up the ln of a quotient into a difference of lons. Well, if you think of it, negative 3 half ln of 4 is just a constant. But as c is an arbitrary constant, this term can be absorbed into c. Because if you think of it, as c is an arbitrary constant, c plus any other constant is also an arbitrary constant. So in the end, we can have as our final answer, 3 over 2 times the ln of x squared plus 6x plus 13 minus the arctangent of x plus 3 over 2 
plus an arbitrary constant of integration. But this is not our final answer, because if you remember, this is simply the integral of this rational function, which is only part of the original integral. So now we can give our final answer, so if we call this i, i will be, well, instead of integrating, of course, this directly, we integrate the result of our long division. So we'll integrate 1, which will give us x, minus 2 times Minus 2 times what? Well, again, if you integrate instead of this, you integrate this. So you'll integrate 1, as we said, was x minus 2 times the integral of this function, which we now have just found. So we need to do 1 minus 2 times the result of this integral, which if we go down, Here is the answer. So minus 2 times the integral of our rational function coming out of long division, and this was the integral. So it is 3 over 2, the ln of x squared plus 6x plus 13, minus the arctangent of x plus 3 over 2, plus c. And now we can multiply across by 2 and provide our final answer. So we'll have x minus 2 over 2 cancel, so minus 3, the ln of. And as this polynomial is an irreducible quadratic and it has a positive leading coefficient, this is always strictly bigger than 0. And so you can actually drop, if you want, the absolute value. If you keep it, it's fine as well. minus 2 times negative 1, so positive 2, arctan of x plus 3 over 2. And here, once again, I will use a notation, because then we'll have negative 2 times c, but as c is an arbitrary constant, so is negative 2c. So we'll simply write again plus c, which we understand to be just an arbitrary constant of integration. And that's it.